So we've seen that a manifold is a set, or a topological space actually, which is a set of the topology. And then we've seen that this topological space can be covered by this family of what we call charts. The whole collection of all these charts is called the atlas. So we have these charts and the specific chart map. So we can visualize now. Let's just draw a blobby manifold. This is our topological space. Just a collection of abstract points. We can then cover this manifold or create charts. A chart, these, remember, these U's are drawn from the topology, so they're just open sets. So this might be one chart, I'm going to call it UX, say. And then if we have another chart, this might be called UY, say. Now what these charts do for us is they map uh, this chart region, or local region of the manifold, into some open subset of the real numbers, or r to the dth power. So for now I'm just going to stick with two-dimensional manifolds, so these chart maps are maps from the coordinate patch into r2. So this chart map is mapping this blue open subset into some image which will be an open subset of R2. So this is the image of that particular coordinate patch or open set under the chart map phi x. Now I'm going to start labelling my coordinates according to the chart map, so I'm going to call this x1 and x2. We're going to have two coordinates since we're mapping a two-dimensional manifold. So this phi maps our region into some region of R2. And I'm just referring to the coordinates of this R2 as x1 and x2. And then likewise for this orange region, that has a chart map phi y, which maps to the open subset, where, and I label these coordinates as y1 and y2. So this might be the image of this orange region under the chart map phi y. So this is our basic setup with our manifold. We can cover it with these charts, which um, kind of can be thought of as representing a local portion or patch or open set of the manifold using some coordinatization of R2, which we uh, kind of intuitively understand. So now, in order to be an atlas, the collection of all of these charts um, has to so-called cover the manifold, so if we take the union of all of the possible charts, I'll subscript them with an i, so this is unioning i lots of these charts, the union of all of them should return the original manifold. So now I want to focus on this overlapping region, so if I just emphasize that in red, this is a portion of our manifold which is being covered by both of these charts. So all the points that lie on, the, on this intersection are going to have an image in both of these subsets. So this might look like this in the portion of the blue um, chart and then something like this in the orange chart. So any point that you choose in the original manifold is going to have some image that appears in both charts. Or rather this should be 
image of the point. So now we know that both of these charts are perfectly valid representations or descriptions of this underlying abstract manifold. We can concretely talk about points in this chart by just giving you two numbers, the coordinates. So these P1 and P2 would be the X1 and X2 coordinates of this point in our original manifold, but in the image of this chart map. But we know that we can just as well talk about that point over in this other chart map. So we kind of want to invent a way for us, if we give you a, a point in X coordinates, how do we find out what it is in Y coordinates? Well, the way to do that is using a so-called transition function. So I'm going to write the transition function as now phi x, y, which is going to be a function on this subset of Rd, so this red region that I've drawn, which is the image of the intersecting region under this chart map. So that's I'll do it in colours so we can keep track of which chart map is which. This is the image under the X chart map of this intersection, intersecting region, which is U, X, intersect, U, Y. So this map, this transition function, is a map from this set, which is this red portion of Rd, which we've drawn here, a map into this corresponding red region in the image of the Y chart map of the intersection. Okay, so I'll just go through that again. Um, I'm calling this intersection, this red shaded region, which is UX intersected UY, the intersection of these two coordinate patches. If I now take the image of this intersected region using the um, X chart map, it looks like this. This portion of it is covered by the X, so this is what this red region looks like in the X coordinates, which is what this expression tells you. The transition function is then a map which maps you from this set, which is here, into this set. And what is this set? Well, it's just the image under the Y chart map of this intersected region. So that's just what the transition function does. How do we actually compute it? Well, if we start over here, what we can do is we can consider the inverse chart map. I haven't told you that we can construct an inverse, but we're just going to assume that we can. So if we consider now the inverse of this map would be phi inverse x, going the other way. This starts us here and takes us back to the original point, p. So I can write that p is just phi inverse um, okay, now I'm going to call the image of the point in the X map PX. So this white point here is PX with coordinates P1 and P2. Okay, so the point P can be written as the inverse chart map of its kind of coordinate point in this chart space. So now if we have our original point P, we could consider mapping that using phi y, which is going to take us into this set, which was our original goal of the transition function to go from here to here. So now if I take this expression and just simply compute phi y of P, now I sub in that P is the inverse of x times Px, so this is phi. This is phi y, 
and now I'm going to use a new bit of notation composed with, essentially it just means that this function is acting on whatever is in this argument, so it's going to be acting on the inverse function for x. Evaluated at the point px. So now this is our transition function. Okay, so we can read this as the transition function to go from coordinates x into y is the chart map y after applying the inverse chart map x. So we're starting with a point Px, which lives over here in this x chart map space. So given a point Px, we feed it into the inverse of phi x, which takes us back to the original manifold, and then we feed it into the y chart map, and it gives us the image in the y chart. So this is the expression for the transition function to go from x and y. And now hopefully it's not going to be too much of a stretch to just run this argument in reverse, starting over here. And you'll be able to convince yourself that the transition function to go from y to x is simply, well, the chart map that you want to do last is x because you're going into x. So you do the map of x after you've mapped back into the manifold using the inverse of y starting with the point PY. So that over there is PY. So then these are our two expressions for now any transition function between two chart maps. So now finally, as an important point, these transition functions are simply functions from in our case, R2 into R2, a general transition function will be a, a function from Rd to Rd. So we understand how to do calculus with this type of a map. So one requirement or property that these transition functions can have is whether or not they're differentiable or continuous and differentiable we're always going to require that the transition functions are continuous. However, their class of differentiability, however, they could be any differentiability class we could think of. So if the transition function is C1, which means it can be differentiated only once, then we have what's known as a differentiable manifold. And now if our transition functions are C infinity, meaning they can be differentiated as much as we like, we have what's known as a smooth differentiable manifold. So as we move forward, we're always going to consider this case, where our transition functions between the, uh, the charts, they're always going to be continuous and infinitely differentiable. So moving forward, we're always going to be considering and working with smooth manifolds. So now to summarise then, we have our manifold, which is just an abstract topological space, set of elements. We understand how to construct these open sets on the manifold due to the fact that it has a topology. Then from these open sets, which live in the manifold, we construct charts or chart maps. These map us into some d-dimensional subset of the real numbers, where d is the, the dimension of our base manifold. So these subsets of the real numbers are viewed as coordinates on the manifold. So each of the d real lines that are mapped to is one of the coordinates. There'll be a coordinate map for each real line, if you like. Then we know that we can cover this manifold with many charts. They might potentially overlap in some regions. And we require that where the charts overlap, they must agree. So if there's a point which lives in the overlap, 
is going to have an image in both charts, but we should have a way to transition between the two charts, in our case, in a smooth and continuous way. And that's what these transition functions do for us. They allow us to effectively, given a point in one chart, find out what its corresponding image in the other chart is going to look like. And we set, construct these transition functions simply by following arrows around in our diagram. So if we start over here, we want to go back into the original manifold to the original point using the inverse chart map. And then we map that point using the desired chart map that we want the transition function to take us into. And that's what this composition of these chart maps does, and that's how we construct these transition functions.